In this video, I am going to talk about how a DML statement gets processed within an Oracle server. As usual, let me put up the instance. Made of shared pool, buffer cache, and I am just bringing in the log buffer. These are the three memory areas we would be using. We also have <coughs> checkpoint, DB writer, log writer, three processes which we will use. Apart from it, we anyway have our server process which is on behalf of a user who is connected. Then we have data file and the read to log file. So assuming there is a user application which is connected and let's say this user now performs a DML. He says update EMP set salary equal to 5000 where employee ID equal to 1001. So there is going to be a block in my data file where this user's row is present. I will mark it as 500. Now what is 500? That is the old value of the salary. So somebody employee ID 1001 who has a salary of 500 is being updated to 5000. When this query comes as usual the SQL will get parsed and within the shared pool we are going to have an SQL area. We assume the parse has happened and we are going to execute. When executing the server process is going to pick this block and bring it <coughs> into the buffer cache. So there is this row in the block which has been brought into the memory and this is going to be updated. Now before this update happens, what happens is something of this sort is entered into the read log buffer. Now I have written just three numbers. It is not going to be as simple as that. It is going to specify there is a transaction started in which I am updating an employee ID 1001 whose old value is 5000 and new values whose old value is 500 and the new value for salary is 5000. This is my old value. This is my new value. So first the entry goes into the log buffer. Then the value of 500 is written into an undo block. Remember we spoke about undo is an area where the old values are kept till a transaction is committed. So it keeps 500 as the salary for employee ID 1001 and this value is updated to 5000. Once this is over, user gets a message saying statement processed. This is all we have done. We have just said an update EMP set salary equal to. This is neither committed nor rolled back. Now we have two choices that can happen next. The user can issue a rollback or he can issue a commit. If he issues a rollback, then it has to just do it back. It will take the value from undo, put it back. It will overwrite 5000 to become 500. There is no need for any entry here. We will come to that later. And user is told rollback complete. Alternatively, the user could also issue a commit. When he issues a commit, every time a commit is made, a system change number is generated and along with the transaction ID, every transaction that is started will be having an internal ID. Transaction ID along with an SCN is put into the 
read log buffer. This happens when the e user issues a commit. Entry is made into the log buffer and entire contents of the read log buffer is put into the read log file. So what happens is all this is emptied and instead it is going to say something like this. The value that I had here 1001 employee ID, old value 500, new salary 5000 and an SCN. I have purposely left a gap here because there could be other transactions that were going on by other users those entries would also be written down irrespective of whether they have been committed yet. So whenever there is a commit, log writer will empty the contents of the log buffer and put it into the read log file. Then there would have been a lock associated with this row. I forgot to mention it earlier. When the user is updating it, it would have acquired a lock so that no other user can fetch the or rather update the same row. That lock will still be present till the time a commit is issued and that lock will be released and the change is made permanent by updating the system change number into that block and this undo entry can now be overwritten. Just a quick check when this lock was maintained before the commit if any other user performed a select statement on this table it would have fetched the old value from 500 to show it to him because the user who performed the update is the only one who can see the new value. Every other user will get the old value of 500 which would have been available from the undo. On commit, this value is now frozen. Now I don't need to have 500 here. We will instead have 5000. It is not necessary for the buffer which is updated to be written down here. This buffer is now marked as a dirty buffer and it will be written down to the data file whenever the DB writer is initiated. Now that can happen at various circumstances whenever a checkpoint is initiated or whenever the buffer cache is getting filled with no free blocks at that time this will get written but there is no necessity as such whenever a commit is issued that the data file has to be updated. So that's a quick look at how a DML statement gets processed. In case of an update, there was undo value generated. In case of a delete also, undo value would have been generated. In case it was an insert, there would be no necessity of major undo. It's just a pointer to the row where the new row was inserted would have been kept. So an update goes through the same steps of performing a parse bring the data from the data files into the memory, keep the copy in log buffer of the old value and the new value, keep the old value in undo, user is told, statement processed and later on when the user issues a commit, a system change number is generated and the entire contents of the log buffer are emptied, the lock is released and the undo is now eligible for being overwritten. That's about a quick look into how a DML statement gets processed. That gives us a pretty good understanding about these three important memory components, log writer, DB writer and the activity of the server process.